All right, so I failed <laughs> on day 45. I uh, haven't done one of these videos in just over a week now because of that. I mean, so day 44, what happened was I came on this video and I said, you know what, I was at Bible study. I did my workout. I'm home. I've got to pack. I've got to get ready. i got to go. What well, was late? I... Um, I got home after the workout and Bible study about 11.30, 12 o'clock maybe. And I had to pack because I had a wedding in Baltimore last Friday the 7th. And then on Saturday morning, I was going to fly to Chicago. And on Sunday morning, my sister was running the Chicago Marathon, which that all happened. Now, on Friday, it was very, very specific scheduling and calendar that I had to make it work. So on Thursday night, I didn't really get to sleep until like, honestly, I didn't really get to sleep. I fell asleep at like three as I was reading my Bible. So I was on the edge of my bed, I was kneeling, and I slept for like 90 minutes in that position. And then woke up at 4.30, did an outdoor workout, listened to the Bible, and then I left for the airport about 5.15, no, uh, 6.15 rather. Got to the airport, Landed and worked on getting the rental car, which which I did through Avail, which it's like it's interesting. If you haven't tried it before, it's cool. Do me a favor, I'll put my my link in the bottom, and if you spend fifty dollars, well you get fifty dollars if you sign up with mine, and then if you spend if you spend any if you reserve something, then I get fifty dollars too. So, I mean. So I was like, you know, that's that's cool. It's gonna work out. It's like two row, but it's kind of managed and operated through was it Allstate or State Farm? I think Allstate. And you know, I get to use third party cars. Cool, whatever. Now I get there off the shuttle, which was a little bit confusing to find in the first place. And then the first car that they put me in was Nissan Versa. And I say like, this thing smells a little bit funky. Like, all right. I'm only here for one night, like it's not that big of a deal. I'll just I'll just roll with it. And I tried to, and then I started to drive away after setting up the mirrors, and I was like, the range says it's only 38 miles left. Come on. So they gave me, I said, hey, look, we gotta change this car. It smells weird, it doesn't have any gas. It's like, yeah, you know, I was worried about that. All right, then let's fix it. So they swapped me for a different car, a different Nissan Versa. We get over there. Open the door with the manual key, try to turn the car on, car doesn't start. Okay, great. I don't want to drive any Nissan Versa anyways, but now we're delayed. Like, come on, we got to go. We got we got places to be, and I'm trying to hustle. So third car, Toyota Avalon, third time's charm. This one works, no complaints. It was fine. It was good. Um, yeah, it was good. But I landed at like 1030, was planning to get the rental car by... 11-ish, which ended up being 11.30-ish, 11.45, and I was thinking that at 11, I could go to the Airbnb, do an outdoor workout around the neighborhood, do it for a run, a walk, combination, and then after that, then I would, I would be finished, showered up, and ready to go at like 12.10, so I could hightail it down to Leesburg, Virginia, so I can meet up for one o'clock lunch with a couple of my friends. Now, <clears throat> it was 11.45 by the time I got the car, or 11, 11.35, so that would mean that if I got to the Airbnb, it'd be 11.45, and I did a 45 minute workout, it's now 12.30 for a one o'clock lunch, and I didn't even shower, plus it's a one hour drive, out of luck. So, that completely like threw off my schedule, and I recognized that to get the second workout in, I'd have to do it after the wedding now. So it's not the worst thing. I mean, the wedding was at uh, five o'clock, so it's not terribly late. It's not the worst thing. I've worked out later than that before, but previous night, Thursday, I didn't really sleep. Like I was in a, I was in a tough situation there. I tried to, to, to plan and to schedule, but there was, there was no contingency because I didn't have the gap for it. So I finished up lunch, uh, left it there at like four o'clock, 4.15, made my way over to Igemsville, Maryland for the wedding, 
which is around Westminster area where they're from, and the wedding was great. That was fantastic, beautiful, lovely, awesome to be part of it. Loved those people. It was great. I forgot to take a picture of myself in my suit because uh, <laughs> I was excited about it. I looked great. I felt like I looked great, and I didn't take any pictures. Didn't dance, didn't take any pictures. Ate some good food, barbecue. And got some good pictures of the, of the bride and groom. Fantastic. Uh, so then I, I'm leaving, and now it's, uh, it's about 10.45 when I left, and I'm tired. I'm like, wow, like I'm, I'm really dragging right now, I'm tired. All right, so I get back to the Airbnb at about 11.30, I change up my clothes, uh, start an ab workout. Actually, now this is where it sunk me. This is where it sunk me, actually. What actually happened was I said, you know, I'm gonna go outside, I'm gonna do an outdoor walk. Great. It was freezing. And it, was, and it started to rain, like, hard. Well, not that hard, but it started, to, it started to like rain, like more than just a sprinkle. It started to actually come down. And I said, you know, I'm gonna go back inside because I already did an outdoor workout. I took the easy path. And I'm sitting there, and I'm doing a side plank, and that's the last thing I remember. I straight fell asleep in the middle of an ab workout on the rug on the floor. Are you serious? It happens. So, I wake up at like 12.50, and I look at my phone, and I'm like, oh, missed call. And it's like, yeah, I was trying to wake you up because you fell asleep. Okay, whoops, that's crazy. Uh, oops, and then I wake up and, and naturally, I'm in the middle of an ab workout and I look at my timer and I said, huh, I can't tell how far I went, but I'm not confident that I finished the workout. And I definitely did finish the workout, let me tell you. So it's now, it's now 12.50, almost one o'clock, and I said, you know what? I'm awake now, I have to finish this workout. Which makes sense, right? Second workout, gotta be 45 minutes, gotta get it done. Everything else was done. I had a progress picture, I had enough food, I had my proper hydration, I read my 10 pages on the plane. Everything was beautifully executed. The workout was done at 5 a.m. It was great. Rental car had an issue. Then I missed my workout slot. And now I woke up on the floor at 12.50, coming up, coming up at one o'clock a.m. And I said, I said, you know what? I can still finish my workout. So I tried again. Would you believe that within just two minutes, I was once again sleeping on the floor? Wake up at three o'clock, 3.15, whatever it was. And I said, why am I, why am I here? What am I doing? I'm on the floor. I'm so tired. Knocked out. I uh, had to dial it up as a loss. And crawl into bed, just crash. I tell my friend, I say, can you please call me at 7 a.m. tomorrow? I can't miss this flight. I wake up at 6.58. Wow, it's 6.58. I'm not even wearing my pajamas. That never happens. I, I always, always sleep in my pajamas. I don't like to sleep in anything else. Like this, like I'm not gonna sleep in this, I'm gonna sleep in my pajama shirt. It's just a t-shirt, but it's, it's designated for that. And that's, that's how I do it. So, <laughs> I, that, that's how off I was, what I'm saying. And now it's a week later, Saturday afternoon, and I'm like, Come on. So when I woke up, I was like, you know, I'm not 100% sure what happened. And, you know, I was talking to a couple people when I was, when I was awake before I went, to, when I went to sleep by accident. So I said, you know what, I need to finish my, I need to do a workout this morning. And then I'll check in with them later and see where I'm at. So I did abs, I did stretching, I did a core workout on the floor. I did some push-ups, a lot of push-ups. And then I checked in and it said, yeah, Harrison, you definitely did not finish the workout. You were asleep. Like I tried to wake you up and I called you 
and you didn't answer. And I was like, oof. Okay, well, that's, that's the end. 75 hard is zero compromise. Two 45 minute workouts, at least one of them outdoors. One gallon of water, 10 pages of a book that's gonna push you forward or better you in life, a progress photo, and 100% commitment to your meal plan or diet with no cheap meals, no alcohol. I don't drink alcohol. I didn't have any dessert at the wedding. I didn't eat fast food on this trip. Didn't have any chips. Everything was in line except for this one thing. Now, last year, 2021, when I did 75 hard, around day 40, 50, this was day 45 that I failed. I finished 44 days consistently, full execution. And now the 45th day was the one that I faltered on. In 2021, when I did outdoor walks, I was wearing my weight vest, weight, weight vest, lights, all, all up, walking up and down the street. Now, I've had, I did walks last year at like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. I probably even did one around 3 a.m. So I was like, you know what? An 11.30 workout, no problem. It was a problem, it didn't work. But in 2021, there was an occasion where I was walking and I was like, man, I'm really wiped out, I'm really tired. And as I'm saying that, like I'm walking and my eyes are closed, just, just walking with my weight vest on, open my eyes and I'm like, I'm in the middle of the street. Okay. <laughs> and then later on, I'm getting back to my apartment on the same walk and I said, man, I'm almost home, I'm almost home, I can go to bed, I can go to bed. Boom, fall into the bush. Whoa. <laughs> so needless to say, I've spent the last week uh, thinking about what I want to do because naturally, uh, so backtracking a little bit, I have a group that I started with some friends, uh, three coworkers from work and then some other friends as well, like four other people, a couple from charts, a couple from around and we started a group for 75 hard and they all started with me or I started with them and one person made it like a week, two weeks, three weeks, one person doing 75 cupcake. <laughs> which I fully respect, they're taking the Sabbath, that's great. Um, yeah, and, and my coworker made it to like five weeks, four weeks, whatever it was, almost half. And they said, they said, wow, you were our leader. We were counting on you. So yeah, I was counting on myself. But it was poor execution. I should have packed on Wednesday. I should have packed on Thursday before I went to Bible study. I shouldn't have relied upon that for the last end of the day when I have to think about how to carry on and carry on a, a personal item, a small duffel bag, plus a suit on the Spirit Airlines where I don't have, I don't have a carry-on bag. <laughs> so I, I just shot myself in the foot, basically. It's like this is a busy week and I'm going to sit here and I'm not going to pack ahead of time? Come on. Like, I know better than that, but I didn't do it. And that sucks. So my number one priority now is maintaining or establishing a strict and firm bedtime because like, it's not good. The, the way that I'm doing this right now, it's not good. I'm tired, I'm, I'm sleeping in too late, I'm missing morning workouts, like I, I'm not as alert as I wanna be, I'm distracted, it's not where I want to be. I'm not at my full cognitive level. So rather than jumping right back into 75 hard, I need to take a step back and I need to reprioritize things. And I need to understand, okay, what do I need to do to establish this nightly bedtime? Because in the future, in the near-ish future, when I'm married, when I might have kids, when I might have other engagements, when I might have people visiting me at home, where like I live in an apartment right now, like my mom's coming in a couple weeks, but that's not a regular thing that people will come by and spend time with me. But when I have a real place, a real family, that's gonna be a more regular thing. So if I'm hanging out with people who are visiting me and then it's nine, 9.30, we're playing card games, we're playing board games, we're playing Monopoly, I'm beating everybody at Monopoly. That's what happens, I beat everybody at Monopoly. And usually the other games too, sorry. Uh, and, and then what do I do to wind down and make sure that I can be in bed by 10, 10.30, maybe 11 o'clock at the latest every night? doesn't happen. Did it happen last night? 
Friday night, you know, I, I get home, talk to a friend, we have some pizza with my roommate, which I haven't had pizza in like three months. It was great to have pizza. I love pizza. We watched, we watched, uh, we watched a movie, we watched Gladiator. Finished at like 12.30. And I started getting ready for bed. It's like 1.15, you know, pray, get in bed. It's like, okay, well, th but this is a lot later than 10.30. You know what I mean? So that's the number one priority because, particularly because one of the things I'm trying to do is I'm trying to add weight and muscle mass. And human growth hormone, natural production of it after 10 p.m. 10 p.m. it's at 100% capacity. 10.30 it's 50%. 50%. 11 o'clock it's 11, or 15%. At 11.30, it's 5%, and at midnight, it's zero. After midnight, the body does not naturally produce any form of any level of HGH. So if you're not sleeping by 10 o'clock, you're, you're hampering your ability to naturally produce HGH. And that's something that I need to make sure that I'm completely aligned on because that's, that's completely aligned with my goals. It sucks. It all sucks. So then on Saturday, I uh, did the morning workout. We got to the hotel. I mean, I landed in Chicago. My mom and my sister picked me up. We went, to the, we went to the expo for the marathon. There were tons of cool things. Fantastic. Loved it. It was great. Awesome people. Awesome experience. Just, it was cool. It was cool. Like, I was very excited that my sister was running a marathon. And, like, honestly, I kind of was like, wow, this would be, like, fun for me to do, too. And then I remembered that I don't like running two miles. Why would I run 26? But... <laughs> I still said I would. <laughs> and then after that, we went to the hotel and we we're all wiped out at like 8 o'clock, 8.30. Like we're like in bed. When would I have done the second workout? At 8.30 at night? And then come in and try to use the shower real quietly so I don't wake my sister? I mean, possible. But what about on Sunday? We woke up at 4, 4.10. We get ready. We leave the hotel room at 5.00. We're at, the foundation area, we're at the foundation area for Dance Marathon, which is who she's running the marathon with, like her Dance Marathon group from University of Iowa. And we're spending time there. We're getting her acquainted. We're getting her ready to go. We're getting her excited. We're getting her calmed. She goes off to the check-in. We go back to the hotel for like 30 minutes. How am I going to do a 45-minute workout when we're in the 30-minute window? You feel me? Now... Me and my mom, we did bike 20 miles around the marathon to find her, to search her, to take pictures all over the place. But that was not an intentional workout. I wasn't biking to work out. I was biking to take photos of my sister. That's not exercise. That was the way to do it. You couldn't drive a car there like that. Moped, not going to work. Scooter, too slow. You know, we, we rented those lift bikes and it was, it was the way to be. It was good. It was fun. And it, it worked. My flight was delayed until 6.52. Didn't take off until 7.20. Didn't land back home until 11. I got home at like 12. What, am I going to work out after that? I already didn't get to bed until 1.30 or 2 o'clock. 2.30, really. I mean... What I'm trying to say is the position that I put myself in and the things that I committed to in this weekend, if I didn't fail 75 hard on Friday, I probably would have failed it on Saturday. If I didn't fail it on Saturday, I probably would have failed it on Sunday. So, it is what it is. But I'm reassessing and giving gratitude and understanding the learnings of it this time versus the previous ones. Like, this time last year, I had just gotten back from Istanbul. And I did 75 hard effectively over there. I took a few days off of reading now. I lost my, my momentum. I haven't read 10 pages in a couple days. I'm going to again. Like, soon. Like, today. But I lost momentum. I mean, there are so many different things that I can think about or things that I could do or have done differently, but 
ultimately I put myself in this situation and I have the consequences as a result of it. Now I'm very grateful. My strength is increasing. My endurance is increasing. My abilities are increasing. I'm more confident in myself than I have ever been. Bar none. I can run a faster mile today than I ever have been in my life. We ran a 5K on Wednesday. We ran the first mile around 9 minutes, 9.15. I was talking to a friend from church. Great to connect with her further and talk, talk a little bit, just catch up. And my friend's looking at me. He's James, he's getting a little bit antsy. He's like, come on, come on, man. We do this every week. Let's go. Okay. Talk to you later. Boom, we take off. We start running like a seven-minute mile. He said, man, it's too fast. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's a little bit fast. The guy comes, starts coming back the other way. We said, well, okay, we're a mile and a quarter out. And this guy's already running back. It's a three-mile three mile thing. So he's at 1.75 miles. We're at 1.25 miles. We're all a half mile behind. Oof. Then the competition kicked in, and I said, "How do we catch him?" Jane said, "He said, he said, uh, can't." Tried my hardest. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do it. He did like three seven minute miles, and my second mile, excuse me, was around like a six uh, forty. Third mile was like a six thirty five. I get done and I'm like, wow. So if I ran three miles straight at that pace, that's under 20 minutes. So 5K, then I could run 5K in about 21 minutes. Wow, progress. <laughs> and I'm in the gym and coming to the office and I'm talking to my coworker and he's like, yeah, with the basketball team, what we used to do was we used to go on the incline bench. And that was the most fun because you know, you can, what you want to do is be able to do as much as the incline bench as you can on the regular bench. And I said, huh, okay. So I do the regular bench and I do my, my, my sets. I do, I do a set of eight, and then a set of five, three, three sets of one, one set of uh, five, and then, and then I moved into the incline bench. Put a 45 on each side. I said, okay, let's, let's, let's try to do four sets of five. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, whoa. Very recently, I was only doing 25 on a side, and now I'm doing 45. Something's working. My diet's giving me energy, the proper nutrition, nourishment. This is good. I talked to my friend yesterday, and they said, so, you know, this is one of the first times that I've talked to you, especially lately, where I can say, you know, you look really rested. I said, huh, well, that is now my main focus since I failed 75 hard. Keep it up, it's important. I said, okay. So I'm saying this because like, I've done 75 hard, I did it in 2020. I completed it in, 20, I completed it in 2020, completed it in 2021. And now, day 45, I failed this year, 2022. But I am in a greater position at a personal level than any of the other years. That's the thing. So, it sucks. And honestly, like, I don't hate anything, but the thing that's closest to that is losing. The thing that's closest to that is losing. And I guess this, this, the other thing would be just intentionally being unkind. It's just unnecessary. But losing just, it, it sucks. Like, it doesn't feel good. When I tell you that I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. And that, 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 that's the bottom line. There are no outs. If the information changes and it's like, yeah, well, it doesn't make sense. Okay, I'm not going to do it. You know, I, I talk to, you know, some, some of my guys and I say, you know, I'm looking at going to Portland. I'm probably going to go to Portland. I'm probably going to go. I'm looking at flights. I'm going to buy one. I'm going to go. Well, I didn't buy a flight. And the flight went up from, uh, I could have gone round trip uh, through by way of Vegas. Round trip to, round trip from Fort Lauderdale to Vegas. 
uh, like $95. Round trip Vegas to Portland at like 85 or like 115 And now I'm looking at I can't get round trip to Vegas in the same time period that I was looking for, which was actually this weekend. Can't get round trip there. It would have been it would have been a round trip flight from here to Vegas. Would have been 250 Round trip flight from Vegas to Portland would have been like another 180 Okay. Now I'm looking at one flight for the price of two. That doesn't make sense. I really want to go. Doesn't make sense. But I really want to be there. I said I was going to go. Doesn't make sense. With the new information, doesn't make sense. So I called it off, you know, naturally. That's where I'm at. It, with how much I've been sacrificing my sleep and my rest and my, my regimen, it doesn't make sense to jump back into 75 hard for me. It makes sense to discipline myself in a way that I am sleeping on time, sleeping enough, and resting properly because of the goals that I have. That needs to be number one focus. And some people are a lot better at that than me. I'm not. Like, you know, people say, like, are you a morning person? Are you a night person? I want to be both. I have nights where I would, I would gladly work until 2, 3 a.m., and I would love it. But what I would love to do even more is get up at 4.30 and continue. But if I work until 3 a.m. and then get up at 4.30, it, I lose it. And if I go to sleep at 3 a.m. and then try to go to sleep on time the next day, it doesn't work. Which leaves me with one option. Become a, night, become a morning person. Fully a morning person. Which, if you ask me what I prefer, it's mornings. I like, I like being a morning person better. I would love every single day to wake up the sun. Like, that's beautiful. But it requires a level of discipline and regimentation that I haven't properly established. Now I have time to establish it because I gave myself time. We've got work to do, man, every day. And I look myself in the mirror and I say, you know what, you, you're you improving, but are you doing your best? And too often the answer is no. Too often the answer is no, you, you stayed up until 12.30 a.m. Doing what? not the way to do it it's not sustainable that way I need to set the foundation today at 25 years old so that I'm ready to go so that when I'm 30 or 35 or 40 that is it's all green lights then when God says are you ready to do this I say yes it's no question I say I'm ready I'm close I'm really close. Like, and, and it, it, there's so much resistance. I, if I'm running a marathon, figuratively speaking here, I'm at mile 20. I'm at the wall. I'm at the block. And I can't slow down. If I slow down again, I lose. My sister was so excited in the marathon. She's like, I did the first half, first 13 miles, and I was just going. It was the best I've ever run. And her running partner, her heart started to race and they walked a little bit. Sister says, you know, after that, it hurts to run. I couldn't run. Right now, it's just me. It's me versus me. Nobody's running with me. Nobody's trying to slow me down. Nobody's trying to speed me up. It's me. What lane am I going to run in and how fast am I going to get there? I've been running and running and running and driving myself and refining myself and allowing God to refine me and purify me and mold me into the shape and the, and the, the purpose that he has. Now what? Now I look myself in the mirror and I say, look, Harrison, what do you have left to do? Get a bedtime, start a business and get some savings. Period. And then let's reassess. 
I'm just in this loop, just in this loop. Things keep going, and I try to like pedal faster and pedal faster and pedal faster. But I'm on a spin bike. I can't go anywhere. I'm on a spin bike. I'm doing two workouts a day, and I did it every day for 44 days. Almost 45. What? For what? I'm in the best shape of my life. Great. What am I doing with that? Nothing. The, the, there's going to be natural frustration with things, and that's what I'm recognizing, that I need to use this and, and use it to energize myself and push me forward further. Because I don't want to be in this situation forever. I don't want to be in this position forever. I have things to do. I have places to go. I have to accomplish more. We got to go. Like, period. Like, that's it. <sighs> yeah. It's go time. It's green, it's green lights all the way around. And it is, it is go. So, I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to keep running. And it's going to be, it's going to be game on. You know what I mean? So, Look, I might not do videos all the time. I might do some just to check in and just pop up on different stuff. Like maybe I'm learning something that I really feel like I should just share out or, or, or reflect on or whatever it is. Most likely it's probably going to be some scripture because I love, I love scripture. I used to like it. I used to just read it. Now I love it. I wake up every morning and I say it's scripture time. Go to sleep at night. Scripture time. I want I want the word to be in my life and leading my life and speaking to me in all different aspects of my life, all different areas of my life. That's what I'm working on. I'm just trying to keep going. John chapter 15, verse 4. Remain in me as I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit apart from the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I stay close to that vine. And the thing about a vine too is when you see when you see the branches and the vine, the vine pulls the branches, directs them, right? Edification, purification, sanctification, all of it. Innovation, creation. I'm just trying to get better. I'm just trying to be a vessel and trying to get better and trying to trying to submit everything to God. And it is so hard when I have built disciplines for myself that I, I can rely on to a fault. If I want to go run a mile, I know I can do it. It seems silly of me to say, God, can you help me run a mile? I, I know I can run a mile. But I want that level of submission, that level of servanthood, that God, would you bless me as I run a mile? Or say, God, I, I want to put on 10 pounds of muscle. If this is not aligned with your purpose, can you let me know? And would you soften my ears like, like the ears of Samuel that I can hear your voice when you speak to me, Lord? May I hear your whisper, God? Which, speaking of, whisper, that is the book from our Bible study. And, you know, I'm just trying to get better at everything. At everything. There's only so much that we can do, but it's like, I'm here. And... I'm finally starting to get over failing 75 hard because that's been my thing. I have inspired people to do 75 hard, to go through it, to, to make their lives better, to increase their mental toughness, and to allow themselves to have a stronger foundation on God. And it hurts that I couldn't set that example for another year. I wanted to do it three years in a row, and then four years in a row and keep going. 
but it didn't happen. And I guess that's okay. And I guess that's all right. I don't have anything else. This was more than I thought I was going to say and more energetic and passionate than I thought it was going to be. And I see my little thing over there. It says, be strong in the Lord, be courageous. I had a message to say. And I think I said it. I think I did. just hope I just pray I just wish that we are doing our best our masterful creator is the master potter and he is shaping each of us and refining us and smoothing us out that means pieces are going to fall off smoothing us pruning us, cutting branches that shouldn't be there, putting up barricades in places that we shouldn't go to. I just, I just, I just want the best for, for everyone around me and that is what drives me. I just want the best. And I don't know what the best is, but God does. But God does. <laughs> All right. God bless. Have a great weekend. Have a great beginning to your week. Have a great month. Great new year. Whenever you're watching this video, just make it great. Praise God. Live for God. Just do your best. God bless.